is Bill. Robert Halfon. Thank you, uh, Madam Deputy Speaker. I have great respect for the Honourable Gentleman, and I have no problem with some of his bill, which has the worthy aims of improving electoral registration yeah. and other members to combat electoral fraud. It is genuinely with regret that I must oppose his bill, as I do have serious concerns about his last clause, which seeks to strengthen measures to control negative campaigns by third-party groups and websites. Effectively, the Honourable Gentleman is calling for regulation of the internet. He's built a Trojan horse of censorship under cover of making every vote count fairly. And I believe that his proposal is wrong for two reasons. It will amount to a serious assault on individual freedom of expression, and it's also unenforceable. Now, as the Honourable Gentleman said on the Today in Parliament programme last Friday, when I almost choked on my hot chocolate, he objects to the so-called attack websites because they can be, and I quote, very effective in the modern world. Now, I agree <laughs> that all election materials must be sourced and that publishers must be clearly identified. But in his interview with Today in Parliament, the Honourable Gentleman went further and he said, and I quote, it's not just attack websites. I think there should be a framework whereby publishing materials about elections, about candidates, either promotion or negative campaigning, needs to be brought within the normal election law. The interviewer put it to him that, and I quote again, you do wonder if the cure might be worse than the disease on this. You might stop people who want legitimately to comment on an election because they have to go through some massive registration process. The Honourable Gentleman's reply, I think, went to the heart of the problem, Madam Speaker, Deputy Speaker, when he said, I'm not calling for censorship, I'm calling for regulation. And this is a false argument, because when it comes to free expression, regulation is censorship by another name. And with free expression, regul regulation is censorship of the worst kind, because it deters amateur enthusiasts, small neighbourhood groups and free-thinking individuals. Now, any increase in red tape and bureaucracy would leave the battle of the ideas to the special interests, the rich, the media, the media establishment, those with extreme views, and professional groups like trade unions and political parties. Now, the Honourable Gentleman justifies his reform by saying that other election literature is restricted. But I believe that election literature is too restricted as it is. There are too many rules regarding second and third party endorsements, for example, and the Electoral Commission regulations can be a minefield. Take the case of Phil Willis, for example, which the Honourable Gentleman raised in his interview on BBC Radio 4. The Honourable Gentleman said that this case proves the need for greater regulations of election materials, especially on the internet. But during the Phil Willis case, I went on television to oppose his removal by the election court because I saw it an outrage as an outrageous attack on parliamentary democracy. Now, I accepted that the judge acted under the law, but the law in this case is wrong. A sitting MP must be removed by voters, not unelected judges. And the new recall system will help. And if an MP has libelled his opponents, then yes, of course, he should be sued for libel. But the election of MPs must be up to voters to decide. My fear about this bill is that it risks almost a throwback to the 1950s, where interviewers on television programmes had to ask the government ministers, what wonderful work are you doing today? <laughs> the effect of the Honourable Gentleman's Bill, if successful, would be to produce a 21st century version of this, electioneering on the internet that is bland and without colour. We now live, fortunately, in an open society where social networking and blogging and communication is of paramount importance. The citizen is no longer a subject, but an autonomous individual. We regularly get criticised on Twitter and other social media sites. Sometimes outrageous or even libelous things are written, and I also have been a victim of some of the things that the Honourable Gentleman described. But mostly that is part and parcel of politics. I don't believe we should bring in a law to stop it, because this is the essence of a free society. <coughs> Negative campaigning is, however frustrating, part of free speech. And we must hope that the truth will ultimately shine through in a marketplace of ideas. We have to ask, is the criminal justice system the right way of dealing with the problems that the Honourable Gentleman has identified? Once we interfere with what happens on the internet, where does this stop? And I say this because the loss of freedom rarely happens all at once. It's usually incremental. First, we restrict free expression on the internet at election times, 
and then we restrict it altogether. My second objection is that this is clearly unenforceable, as the Honourable Gentleman has said himself on BBC Radio 4. Web postings can be done overseas, domain names can be registered in different territories. And even if you restrict one individual from commenting, it's like Hydra's head, another one will pop up in its place. We all know what Voltaire said, but as a good Tory, let me quote Hayek. In any society, freedom of thought will probably be of direct significance only for a small minority. But this does not mean that anyone is competent or ought to have the power to select those to whom this freedom is reserved. That is why, although, we have although I have great respect for the Honourable Gentleman and support much of this bill, I cannot let it pass through the House unopposed. The question is that the Honourable Member have leave to bring these bill. As many of that opinion say aye. Aye. Of the contrary, no. 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 Division, clear the lobby.